All right. So we were talking a little bit about uh, some patients that we've been seeing that uh, we've been treating with anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And what we've been using is hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which for short is HBOT, we call it. Just because it is a, it is a mouthful. Um, so we use hyperbaric oxygen therapy mm -hmm. for people sometimes with anxiety and depression to help manage. We're not trying to cure it. We're not trying to manage this anxiety and depression by helping to improve functionality within the brain. Mm -hmm. And so the question, next question would be probably, how does that do that, right. right? So when we're dealing with anxiety and depression, we know we're dealing with the brain. We know the brain needs oxygen, mm -hmm. right? It needs oxygen, it needs a lot of it. I, I, I said earlier, I believe it is 20% that it takes from, you know, immediately. I can't remember if it's 20% if that's oxygen or glucose, but anyway, it's around like 20 to 25%. Uh, so it takes 20 to 20% immediately, mm -hmm. let's say but it's somewhere around there. And what it needs it for is it needs oxygen to create healthy cells, healthy brain cells. And healthy cells anywhere, but healthy brain cells. Because oxygen makes ATP, or energy. And so if you think about energy being a source of let's say day to day, like when you don't have energy, what do you feel? You feel fatigued. You might even feel depressed. You know on those days when you're just really tired? Mm -hmm. And you just, maybe like, maybe those are the days that things are maybe even more anxious for you. So those could be considerations. But my point is here is that oxygen helps the brain to function at its highest possible you know, ability so that we can help to eliminate the, uh, the emotional uh, limbic system stressors that create kind of that anxiety. So mm -hmm. when we listen to our limbic system, which is our deep brain here, if we look at kind of the brain in these deep centers here, um, they're not exactly like this, but they're limbic centers. It's our emotional area. It's really important because if I tell you something that is emotionally relevant to you, you're going to remember it better. But if I start going off on about accounting or legal or, you know, it's not that interesting, right? Because there's no limbic association. So it's an important system. Everything in our body has a purpose. But what happens is for people, sometimes we've had traumas or experiences or we've had concussions or brain injuries in the past that have resulted in disruptions in information from our higher brain structures, like our frontal lobe, our uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which is in the frontal lobe, and these other areas, um, pr basically prefrontal areas. And I know what you're thinking. Dr. Mack, you're getting a little too specific. Don't get specific, and you're right. But anyway, the higher brain functions that we want functioning well which really responds to oxygen and that type of thing. We want them to be inhibiting this limbic system at all times. Mm -hmm. If I don't want to move my arm, I don't want my arm to move. <laughs> if I'm sitting here trying to talk to you and I can't stop this, it's because something is not inhibiting my muscles from doing something. Some error in my brain is not signaling these types of things. Mm -hmm. So when you look at anxiety and depression, there's something, we're being very general. I am not a psychologist. I am not a therapist. I just want to make that clear. This is not, you know, therapeutic advice in that sense, but it is since, uh, you know, my neurology background, I understand this stuff a lot. And have some experience with it. So uh, if you look at um, the uh, ability for the brain to inhibit that, we need a healthy brain up here. And it's not that the people who have these anxieties and depressions don't have a healthy brain up here, but this is winning here. There's something with this area that's not inhibiting it. Now, a lot of times, ways, other ways you want it, you definitely want to do this is you want to go and seek therapy. Because therapy helps to take out the sources of the limbic issue, so you don't need to inhibit it as much. 
Does that make sense, Ben? Right. You take away the source of why, of the thing that keeps telling you, you know, you're not good enough, or this or that, or you're not worthy, or, you know, this could happen, or your worries, anxieties. But, so we want to hit it on twofold. We want to take out the source, and we do that through therapy and other means. Mindfulness, meditation can help, that type of stuff. But you really need to address if there's a specific problem. But for some patients we've talked about too, they don't have anything that they're aware of that is causing this. So what could that be for those people? Well, for those people, it's something to do with this inhibition process. And it can be something to do with anywhere along the line of the brain and those brain stem, right? Cerebellar structures, even the spine and those types of areas that are interrupting this circuitry which then allows us to inhibit here. Mm -hmm. So how does hyperbaric fit in here? Great question. Hyperbaric, what it does is hyperbaric is oxygen under pressure. So we, we put in extra oxygen into a tank, which we don't need, but it is pressurized because that pressure takes oxygen from a gas to a liquid form. And why is that important? Because if we look at our lungs, oxygen comes in and it is dissolved into our bloodstream, okay? And the bloodstream carries it throughout the body. Now the problem is we only have so much blood. We only have so many red blood cells, right? So we only, we're limited by our red blood cells. And these red blood cells, I'll draw our little artery here, are carried by, uh, I'm sorry, our oxygen molecules are carried by red blood cells. And they're, the red blood cells are pretty big, and oxygen molecules are tiny, but each red blood cell can only carry four oxygen molecules. So we are, in a sense, limited by, now under all normal circumstances, we function well. We don't need hyperbaric. And not everybody needs hyperbaric, I should say. Um, but for those of us who do, if you've had concussions or you've had injuries or you have something going on or you take this minute, you know, there may be a reason you're not getting enough oxygen to your brain. To allow this inhibition process to occur. Mm -hmm. So what, what hyperbaric does, getting back to that, is what it does, it takes oxygen from a gas to a liquid form, what that means is it now diffuses into the bloodstream and it's not requiring red blood cells to carry oxygen anymore. Now it's just in the plasma or the fluid of our blood. Now here's the other cool thing, it's not just in the bloodstream, it's now in your, in your uh, lymphatic system, it's your, in your cerebral spinal fluid, it's in every liquid form in your tissue and your, in your body. Not only that, under the pressure, it's pushing these oxygen molecules deeper into your tissue. So for our understanding, it would be oxygen going deeper into the brain and maybe even healing these limbic areas or would be healing these limbic areas. The source of the trauma or whatever, you still have to, you know, that's, that's not to say that's going to get rid of that. You still have to address, but it may help you in your process in that, in that, uh, uh, that avenue, that, that storyline. So we have to still focus on that. But these other regions can help. But if you don't have this, if this is no longer, if this was never a problem, you don't have a, you have some kind of other source, like concussion, like I said, or some other, some other reason that you're anxious for us. And a lot of us don't know why we are. Mm -hmm. We just are for whatever reason. Or you're just really busy and you're, you're overstimulated and you need something that helps to calm down this limbic area. It's all about this limbic area. Especially, you know, we you hear the word amygdala, right? That is part of your limbic system, okay? So the amygdala. The amygdala seems like it's not our friend, but I'm sure it has a purpose. <laughs> but it's, you know, worry is appropriate. If you're, if you're not worried and you walk through, you know, traffic on a busy day, that's a problem because you could get killed. But worrying about something that will never happen, that could happen, is not a good thing. So you need to be able to differentiate sometimes our thoughts, and that's 
is where the amygdala can be helpful sometimes and not so helpful other times. And that's where our brain helps with that piece. So we're limited by our blood cells. So we want oxygen to get into our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And we want it in a way that's really accessible to our entire body, especially our brain. So now that we have oxygen in our bloodstream, we can now distribute it, especially to these, well, not especially, but we're especially excited about these areas that get tons of extra oxygen, three to 600% in the chambers that we use, closer probably to 300%. But we don't, you don't need that technically, you know, 300%, but that's a lot of oxygen, but it allows your brain cells to get the oxygen they need to become healthy and make energy and heal. So heal these pathways that are some, for some reason damaged along the, somewhere along the pathway, there's a problem. That's just how we look at our patients, right? You look at this pathway, we're making it very basic. There's the mind, the higher brain, there's a connection between them, there's a limbic system. Mm -hmm. Now, if the problem is therapy, and trauma, and those things that you need to do therapy for, then you, that's the source of the problem. If the problem is injury to the white matter connections that distribute information because you had a concussion or a brain injury or something like that, then that might be the problem. And it could be both, too. And it could, oh my gosh, well said, it could be both. Mm -hmm. And it could be these prefrontal, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex areas that are the most susceptible after a concussion or head injury that could be the source of the problem. Mm -hmm. So it's either here, 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 two out of three, or all three, right? right? So we just don't know. The beauty about the hyperbaric is, is there's no, there's only a few contraindications for, for the levels that we are doing it at. Right. And there's, so there's, there's really, it's very benign treatment. Um, so uh, most people feel better after they do it. So acutely, you can help some of these anxiety and depression episodes but long term, when you treat them repetitively over time, you get more of this healing of the brain and more of this complete resolution as much as possible. Maybe that gives you the effort to get to the therapist. Maybe that helps you and your therapist make your next steps in your process, um, which can very much be the case. Sometimes we're, like you said it perfectly, you're limited here, but there could be other factors that are contributing to your limitation. Mm -hmm. And that's not fun. So you could have the best therapist in the world, but maybe we need a little more help. You know, or you're spending all your time here, but the problem was up here. I don't know. You know, we don't know that. So we want to try to treat that as appropriately as possible mm -hmm. in the most beneficial way. And the hyperbaric does that, and it gets to all these different areas because it saturates the brain with oxygen. Right. And so we get all this oxygen all through the brain. It's outer tissues, and just the brain uses it as it sees fit and heals tissue heals the brain cells and, and we function at our best possible rate, which we're not meant to have, you know, progressive anxiety and worry. Like I said, you know, worry is important. A little bit of anxiety over stepping on the train tracks if the train's coming, that's normal. But worrying perpetually about things that don't exist is, is the problem. And so that's when the, when the limbic system kind of goes with that loop and just keeps going. So we need to have our loop breakers. Yeah. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, makes sense. Great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for asking.